Hey guys, it's uh, Chris Sr. here back from CNH Mall and again for another informative uh, quick video here. We had a guy, he uh, brought over his um, uh, Long Boy Dwarf Force machine here, the uh, 6.5 horsepower specific model right here. And he wants to check it out here for him and um, we find out he had multiple issues with it primarily. Uh, the biggest issue was the machine uh, was not, um, was uh, it would not start up and it was leaking gas. And uh, we find out the uh, carb was uh, basically pissing itself, and um, it filled up the entire uh, under um, under uh, deck baffle system, the part where the uh, muffler has a, um, a horn-shaped uh, uh, tube that goes up from the crank up down to the uh, exhaust side on the engine over here. Because uh, if most people are aware, you have a, a lawn boy, you have your muffler underneath here. It goes up from the bottom of the. Um, combustion chamber and goes out the exhaust port then goes back over to the uh, exhaust uh, muffler side over here for that so you have a, a u-shaped uh, uh, we will call small tube that loops up underneath from the engine goes underneath the deck and goes over to the exhaust uh, muffler side over here as well too. that thing was absolutely packed with oil because we, we had to uh, do a, a few other things to the machine over here to get the, to get it running over here and we find out that uh, muffler area was completely filled with gasoline because we had to replace the actual uh, belt on this thing and the actual drive cable as well too. The drive cable was uh, shot. Uh, it looks like the guy might have used some kind of a Chinese knockoff cable on here so we had to put a uh, brand new OEM cable or a brand new OEM cable assembly on here and we also put a brand new OEM uh, drive belt on here as well too. And I'll give you a shot of the actual engines, uh, or actually the model number, the tag on here, the back of the, on the back of the deck here for you guys. So this is a model number one zero three two three, serial number twenty four hundred right here. So I believe last time I checked, that's a uh, two thousand four model, guys. And uh, that was the last year they actually produced uh, the two stroke, if I recall correctly. And um, uh, typically, these things uh, retail for about, I think about $400, $500 back in 2004, I think. Uh, that, last time I looked them up on the actual Lawnmower Blue, uh, Blue Book website on there. And uh, he also needed a carb cleaned out. He needed a new prior bulb on here. The old prior bulb was completely cracked all along the whole outside on here. These prior bulbs are only uh, black rubber on here. And it's a good idea to replace them every few years because they start cracking all around, or all around the lip on here, down inside the actual uh, lip area right here where it actually mates the base, the white base area right down as well too. And uh, I think that was everything you needed done on here for that because, um, uh, let me see what else I was going to say here. We had, to, we, had, we had to degrease the entire bottom of the actual deck underneath here too for the uh, when we actually we had to separate uh, the casing on here. If uh, most people aren't aware of the fact that if you have one of these um, door force engines right here and you do want to replace the belt on them, uh, you're looking at at least a one hour to almost two hour job because uh, you have to take the uh, deck off here, you have to separate the lower casing right here for the uh, bottom of the engine right here. You have this, uh, this uh, we're gonna call aluminum plate right down here, guys. You have to take the deck off first, and you take the plate right off here, and you have to un. Um, you have to take your adapter for the actual horseshoe. I told you about the horseshoe for the muffler plate. You got to take that apart underneath there, and you have to uh, get all that stuff out of there just to get to the actual uh, deck uh, or drive belt underneath here, because uh, this drive belt underneath here was uh, soaked with. Um, uh, gasoline and oil mix because of the carburetor was basically leaking all over the entire deck underneath here and we had to degrease the entire um, uh, adapter plate I, I, I can call it an adapter plate underneath there between it's, it's basically an adapter between the deck and the actual engine casing itself right here for that you have this plate right here and it basically mates directly to the bottom portion of the engine right here as well too then you have your deck down here so you have your steel deck and you have your adapter plate, which is aluminum, and you have your cylinder block here for your actual cylinder. It's just aluminum as well, too. And um, this guy had a lot of oil and anything else down inside your uh, belt area right here. Because we had to dig. I spent probably about an hour and a half doing his job over here. And we had to degrease it, make, make it, make it uh, spick and span clean. You want to put it back together completely clean and dry anytime you have your. Um, 
uh, deck dry belt in there because if you don't and you have any kind of uh, oil that oil will get on your belt so always be mindful when we take these things apart and clean up everything with brake cleaner and you put it back together completely dry so uh, your your drive system will function uh, at its peak performance right there specifically because if you have any kind of oil as I said before it will get on that belt and uh, it will uh, basically uh, seeping the belts and material on there and I'll start causing slipping issues with the drive unit right there as well too so yeah what issue was it looked like the guy's dog might have been uh, chewing on the gas cap I don't I don't know how to describe it it looks like the dog might have been eating on the uh, gas cap right here you can see it some kind of something was something was chewing on right here for that but uh, he didn't want that replaced I said okay no problem but it's still leaking right through there right there but I wouldn't really worry about it all because it's only a real small minor uh, issue, but uh, these gas caps are about you know, eight or ten dollars if you can get them on online. So they're they're not too uh, expensive right there for that. So we'll go ahead and fire this thing up here for you. I should mention uh, one thing: uh, these do uh, this engine does have a surging issue on here. Even though we rebuilt the carburetor, cleaned it out, uh, did all the typical R and R for it. We even put a new main jet in there. Uh, new side atmospheric uh, screw as well too. Uh, the guy originally brought over to us, um, he actually took the side screw, you can see it right down here, I'm seeing a better picture, sorry about that. They have a side screw right here guys and uh, typically they have a piece of uh, tape over top of that but the guy for some goofy reason took it out of there and he lost in his yard and uh, the machine was not running right here before him at all and uh, we find that over the course of the uh, testing it over here um, somebody put two uh, governor springs in the top of the air vane on there as well too to try to compensate for the machine surging out here and I do not recommend that kind of uh, you know feature or upgrade or you know you know some kind of quick fix but uh, we took them both out and we put one brand new OEM uh, spring in there is for that but uh, the machine still has surging issues and uh, unfortunately I'll be completely honest about this machine uh, I'd say at least uh, 25 to 40 percent of these machines out there they do have surging issues I seen them rough the showroom floor out there surging guys and I actually talked to uh, lawn boy and the Toro, Toro um, master mechanics and they, they told me whenever these things came into their shops even brand new you might get one or two out of say 10 out there right from the factory you have might like a slight surging issue but you can't do anything about it because the carburetor is fixed and there's no way to fine tune them other than trying to uh, drill out the main jet and trying to hope for the best. But the problem is that's a non EPA uh, sanctioned repair. So I do not recommend that unless you want a Mickey Mouse, your own, your own, uh, your own carburetor yourself. Because we cannot do that over here because we're a shop. And due to insurance and liability issues, we can only replace the machine's parts using um, OEM sanctioned uh, rules and regulations right there for that. So I'll go ahead and fire this thing up here for you guys. Let me see here. I'm hold my camera here and this thing on choke. Let me prime a couple times. One, two. Let me put my camera down here real quick and I'll get it real quick, guys. Hold on.
It seems to have a uh, okay idle when I saw on idle slow right there, but it's still having uh, slight surging issues on low speed. So I'll jack it back up on here to high speed. stop now these uh two-stroke uh, door force the uh, later generation as this one is right here uh, sometimes they do surge like that uh, especially whenever they're cold out there after they warm up usually uh, the surge might uh, dissipate a bit and uh, typically the surging usually goes away under some kind of a uh, load like a mod or to a heavy load as i just uh, described you know going around my yard over here cutting with the um, machine here so uh, there's really no good way to completely eliminate uh, the actual surging issue. Uh, we put a brand new carburetor on here. We, we even tried a brand new carburetor. Uh, the surging was still there, so we just put the old one back on there. And uh, as you see, that's the result right here. We drove it around uh, my small yard over here. Uh, we just got done uh, cutting some grass up and down here probably for a, a couple minutes up and down the hill. And uh, it does cut okay, and uh, it was running fine under a moderate to a heavy load so this uh guys if you have a machine like this is surging and you did everything to it to try to get the machine running properly i just recommend it just uh, don't don't worry about it don't fret about it anymore because uh as long as it runs under good uh you know load like a heavy load if you're cutting your grass and you put it on like a number three setting on there and, and the machine runs perfectly fine i would not worry about the surging because if it runs fine under the full load it should be perfectly fine this machine you got about 120, 125 compression, um, a PSI and a compression right here. So the cylinder is good and the actual uh, piston rings are non-scored because we took a look down inside when we actually took the, uh, uh, we don't call horseshoe out of the muffler assembly underneath there, looked down inside and there's no scoring in it. So it got about 125 PSI. So that's perfectly fine for this uh, application of machine right here for that. So if anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot, uh, feel free to uh, leave me a message here. If I skipped over something or if you want something clarified, just uh, leave me a message and I'll try to get back to you probably within 24 or 48 hours after you post me some kind of uh, question or message. So I'll see you guys and have a nice day.